DC. Uh, I really want to thank you for participating in this. I do spend uh, an awful lot of time in Washington uh, on the Intelligence Committee. Uh, we are charged with oversight uh, of the intelligence community, in particular uh, in my subcommittee with NSA. Uh, we're also charged with um, doing all that we can uh, to make sure that the federal government itself is well protected, and today it by and large is not terribly well protected, uh, as we saw with the OPM hack. Uh, charged with making sure that our laws um, allow for and encourage the sharing of information um, between the private sector, universities, corporations, and the government, all three of those uh, types of institutions being places where uh, significant expertise lies and significant vulnerabilities. Um, and overall, making sure that we are configured uh, to address the many cybersecurity threats that are out there. Uh, at the federal level, we do think a lot about something that's probably not quite as much concern for people uh, in this room, which is the nation state to nation state challenges. Um, in some ways, those are a little less scary, though, than uh, things that you probably think more about. We are, uh, um, with respect to our adversaries like North Korea, like Iran, Russia, China, uh, we are better at uh, at um, certainly offensive uh, measures than they are, and um, they don't know exactly how uh, we do things or what we are doing. That creates a somewhat um, tenuous, I would say, but at least uh, something of a balance of power where uh, you know we will see espionage, that is to say, uh, the North Koreans breaking into Sony's uh, um, servers, um, but we have some comfort that we're not going to, from a nation state, see an attack that results in very little damage. Now, that obviously is a shaky uh, equilibrium, a shaky balance of power, so it's not something that we assume will always be true. And of course, we do assume that, as we watched with the Russians in Georgia and any number of other situations, that if we did find ourselves in conflict with the nation state, we would see the array of their capabilities. That is probably a little bit outside the scope of this room. Um, we also spend time, though, on something that, uh, that where, where, where there really is no particular balance of power, no uh, mechanism that uh, gives us comfort that bad things won't regularly happen. And of course, this is uh, individuals who are either interested in stealing information for financial gain, uh, or quite frankly, uh, you know, they say hacktivists uh, who are interested in creating problems to make a point. Um, these are not people who are constrained by the kind of geostrategic issues that a Chinese general would be thinking about as he tasks uh, his, uh, his uh, cyber um, uh, warriors, if you will. So uh, let me just um, uh, offer up a couple things so you got a little bit of a window into what we're doing and thinking um, at, the, at the federal level. Um, first, um, as you will be aware, we, we, we did finally pass, after many years of going back and forth on the balance between the need for information sharing and the very serious need to protect people's personally identifiable information, we finally did at the end of last year pass a Cybersecurity Information Sharing uh, Act, which created this protocol for the private sector to share information with the federal government, to share information uh, with each other, um, and to have a dialogue uh, about both the identification and attribution of malware and other cyber uh, threats. Um, I always ask, since I'm not a professional myself, and I ask this of, the, of, the, you know, of, of everyone from Walmart to J.P. Morgan Chase, how is that going? Is there a robust dialogue between uh, the experts at places like the Department of Homeland Security, NSA, and other places, uh, and the information security operations within the private sector. That needs to work. And by work, I mean it needs to work in such a way uh, that we are working quickly to identify threats, to try to come up with attribution. Of course, all the while doing the other piece of what that act was designed to do, which is to protect people's uh, privacy. Um, Congress has a dynamic where you work for years to pass a bill, uh, and then you forget about it. And so uh, this is not a challenge, though, that lends itself to us losing focus uh, because we won't win this fight, right? This is, a, this is an ongoing uh, exercise and application of taking a few steps ahead of people who may wish to sit one way or another. 
uh, and constantly applying ourselves. So I always, I always put that plea out there. How are we doing? Is that, is that interchange of information? Are we operating as a team when it comes to identifying whatever it might be? People who seek to steal social security uh, numbers, uh, right through you know people who might wish to bring down a network. How are we doing in terms of uh, uh, of that uh, communication and interchange of information? And what else should we do? Uh, this is a pretty esoteric uh, field. It's not one that my colleagues, 535 room, any of them really have particular technical expertise. Uh, so we really need to listen as to, as to what the next steps are. Uh, number two, this is something that we're becoming very conscious of. Um, we have a significant training uh, and workforce capability in this sphere um, in this country. Uh, Ernst & Young estimates that by 2020, which is what, four years away, we have a two million full-time equivalent deficit in people who are trained in network security. And that's a staggering number. It's obviously not a, it's not really uh, something that we can fix. Uh, you don't get trained up in this field in, in, in two days. And so, you know, we are going to need to cobble together some combination uh, of, of improved technology, automation, better focus on training and workforce development, probably some outsourcing, um, uh, whatever it may be to address that to address that challenge. We're not focused enough on it, and, and, and I really think uh, we need to be. This may be something, by the way, that lends itself to cooperation between uh, federal government, universities, and the private sector. Why should we not be? Uh, I sometimes sort of dream, you know, I don't know how many of you are from this area, but you know, we've got UBS here, the largest trading floor in the world, where they're not doing trading floor. You know, we've got these, um, uh, you know, data-oriented companies like Gartner and FactSet and Data all within a five-mile radius. You know, why, why couldn't we take a building like that and, you know, create sort of a university or a training center where we really start to train and certify people in network security? I'm not sure that's a good idea, but I kind of like, kind of like the uh, locality of it. Um, but anyway, it's obviously a challenge. We need to. Uh, we need to address in a meaningful way. Lastly, um, and this is um, uh, to, to the layperson like me, this is a, a more impressive uh, uh, thing than it is to experts like you, but um, we have not done nearly enough to propagate through the general population to, to educate people on the basic measures they can take to uh, keep themselves, their information, and their network secure. There's not a corporation out there Within the Pentagon, within the CIA, there are people who will open unidentified attachments out of unidentified emails and compromise networks. It still happens even amongst people who absolutely should uh, know better. You would not believe, I can't talk about it, but you would not believe the ways that we have of getting into other people's networks that you would just say, I can't believe people would ever do that. The point being, of course, um, that uh, uh, you know, training two million full time equivalents in network security is a hell of a challenge. You know, just propagating through our population the idea that you shouldn't open attachments to emails and go ahead. That's a little easier, and of course, it would uh, it would stop an awful lot of the, uh, the the challenges that we did. a lot of the problems we see uh, develop out there. Anyway, um, I just want to close by saying, um, uh, in addition to spending a lot of time thinking about cybersecurity, I do represent this area. I suspect some of you are from this area. Um, this works, and we get this right because there's an ongoing dialogue. Uh, between the government, between people who uh, really are, uh, you know, in the networks, uh, understanding, understanding the networks, and so I do, uh, uh, particularly for those of folks who are around here, do invite you to start a dialogue with me, with my office, um, because as I said earlier, um, this isn't a problem that we solve and move on to the next thing. This is uh, this is something that we. Uh, Forever, we'll be working hard to stay a few steps ahead of the bad guys, and that uh, if we take our eye off the ball, that won't happen. Um, and so, I do want to uh, offer up that uh, hope that we can uh, keep a good dialogue going. And um, I uh, appreciate um, being invited to help kick this off, and, and uh, the attention that the crime and others are bringing to the challenge. Thank you.